in trying to understand the martial arts. Whether it's talking to somebody in your own style or somebody out of your own system, it's important to understand the different attributes and definitions that are used. This will lead to a better understanding of the definitive similarities that you will find in those martial arts and be able to share them with each other. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. Welcome to Shihan's Dojo. I'm Shihan Marty Husband, and I'm here today to help you build your martial arts skills and knowledge. Or if you're here for the first time and want to know a little bit more about the martial arts, tell you a little bit more about it. So if you're here for the first time, jab that subscribe button and punch the bell so we can notify you when we have a new video coming out. The question for today is what attribute out there would you like to share with everyone out here that you think is overlooked or needs to be talked about? Put it in the comments so we can have a discussion about it. In today's video, we're going to establish a certain type of language that can help us across the future videos and is quite indicative of most fighting systems. I will try to give out just major attributes today and try to discuss just a little bit about them so we can have a frame of reference to go off of. First we have to define what is an attribute. Webster's Dictionary defines it as any quality or characteristic that can be predicated of some subject. Specifically, such qualities or characteristics as to pertain to the subject necessarily. Let us break down the different characteristics we can build upon and break down in all fighting systems. In studying fighting, we have to understand one important thing. Thing, body mechanics. If we do not understand the physiological state of a motion or an action that the body can produce, then we'll never understand the physical limitations we can have on tendons, muscles, bones, and that there. So we have to make sure we see this as efficiently and naturally as possible. We also have to break down the motions at each step. That way we can have a continuous pattern to understand how our body should be reacting at each point of the technique. This will help to eliminate wasted motion and wasted energy. There's a lot that can be a drive from simple body mechanics or understanding the basic kinematics of muscles and how they're being used with the necessary actions to complete the techniques. That's why the athlete and the coach must go through and, and determine the body type that you are in order to really work efficiently on setting up your training schedule and how to use it. Number two, we're going to talk about strength. Strength is basically defined as the quality or the state of being strong with the ability to do or bear with the capacity for exertion and endurance, whether it's physical, intellectual, or even moral. In reality, when people do not break down the physical actions, change, or see the variance in the techniques that can be used in different types of situations. So therefore, it's intellectually impossible without the disciplined mind of understanding how your body's moving, and it could limit your attainable strength that you might have been able to complete. The strength of morals, on the other hand, we'll cover in another time because it doesn't really have a place in this video. However, I just thought it should be mentioned. Number three is reflex, which is an action of movement that is performed involuntarily in consequences of nervous impulses transmitted from afferent fibers from the receptors or the sense organs from the nerd site that causes some sort of varying reaction. Reflex in and of itself is a big topic, but in knowing what the trainer is trying to accomplish by strengthening up the muscles and the bones, he can also learn to build up the reaction times of the reflexes and to help them become more natural and be able to use them involuntarily. This is the point where we move without thinking. It's more like a feeling and, and not just an action. Number four is mobility. Mobility is the maximum range that is attainable through conscious effort or sustained effort. In understanding mobility, we have to understand it is done in exercise with a partner or forced by us to do something that our body doesn't normally do. Mobility eventually works ourselves into its, our fight plans and how we're going to handle our self-defense situation or our sporting aspects. It is also prevalent in how we do strategy and tactics so that we can build up our fight plans to determine the proper angles to handle a different techniques or different actions that an opponent might throw at us. Number five we'll call speed. As we know, speed is the act of moving swiftly. Its scalar quantity is equivalent to the maximum velocity that can be attained. A major mistake that is often made in studying speed, people don't realize that it's more than just the body. It's a part of the mind. And the mind has to make sure the body moves quickly enough to send out whatever technique or type of attack you're trying to accomplish. It also has a sympathetic relationship that can be done with the reflexes as we discussed earlier. There are many aspects such as the types of speeds, the characteristics to promote speed, situational speed, and several others that we will cover in depth in another time. Number six is power. Power works with strength and propulsion in the idea of the ability to do or bear. It works with many of the previous attributes we discussed and is also built upon the premise of the mind and not just the body. The seventh and final major attribute we will talk about is strategy. Yes, strategy is an intellectual part of being able to understand attributes. Strategy is an artifice or a trick 
trick that you'll use in fighting in order to disguise it from the opponent or make them do something or draw them in. Whatever, it, it has a specific purpose that needs to be done. In many ways, it can take one tactic or many tactics in order to get to an endpoint that the fighter is trying to get to, whether it's in their fight plan or being in a position where they might be able to get away from an attack. There's a lot of strategy in many ways, like the games that you play, such as checkers and chess, two different games, but chess has a much more complicated type of strategy and you have to use varying tactics to get the king. But in any of these games, you're trying to get your opponent to do something that you're trying to set them up for in order to win the game. This is how you also utilize and build tactics in your fighting to encompass the strategy you have. It takes a lot of thought. It's not just swing your fist here, block this here. It doesn't always work that way. I know this is mostly definitive stuff we're doing today, but this is only to get you an idea of, of where we're going to be going with some of our future videos here. Yes, there are other attributes we did not cover, and we'll try to discuss these different attributes that aren't in here. This will also lead up to defense and attacks, and I also consider attributes, but th those will be separated into its own set of series. Remember, you have to set definitions down in order for people to understand you. Sometimes it's not easy to explain to somebody exactly what you're thinking. And sometimes it doesn't make them wrong, maybe just not understanding how to transfer that information. So I am trying to explain to you guys out there the way I see it. Not always correct. There's things I'm still learning even today after 45 years. So if you did find anything useful in this video, hit that like button and tell your friends about it so we can continue to have Xi'an's dojo grow. Don't forget to answer the question that we asked earlier and also any questions you might have down there in the comments. And we hope to see you here again on Xi'an's dojo.